Welcome back to Intro to Philosophy 1010, the summer 2019 session. So here's our book, Introduction to World Philosophy. And in this video, we're going over the skeptic Francisco Sanchez. So in the introductory notes, it it explains that he was born in 1551, lived till 1623, and born to a Portuguese family. They converted to Christianity. During the Inquisition, they moved to southwest France, where he studied scholastic philosophy, and he became known ultimately as Sanchez the Skeptic, and he was considered one of the most dangerous enemies of Christianity because he claimed that nothing can be known. And I thought this was interesting in the introductory notes on page 400, it, re it reads, Socrates famously said that he knew only that he knew nothing. Sanchez denies that he knows even that. So the skepticism of Sanchez. So exam number two, part A, the final question asks, Francisco Sanchez says that since no one can embrace everything, nothing is known. Does the philosophy of the Upanishads agree or disagree in what way? So I skipped over this, the infinite regress arguments that Sanchez uses because we've gone over that with other philosophers. I am just going to go to page 402 where in the last paragraph, he says, since no one can embrace everything, each chooses a part for himself while others tear the rest to pieces. Hence, nothing is known. For since all the things in the world constitute a single whole, some cannot exist without others. Some cannot persist with others. Each fulfills its own function different from the rest, but all contribute to the whole. Some cause others, some are caused by others. The concatenation of all of them is indescribably complex. It is therefore not surprising that if we are ignorant of one, we are ignorant of the rest. So his argument is that to have knowledge, you have to know everything. You can't, anything that's partial knowledge is the same as no knowledge at all, because you have to understand how everything is related to everything else. So if you don't know every single part of the whole, you don't really know any of it. And is that consistent with the philosophy of the Upanishads? Well, the demand that true knowledge requires knowledge of the whole does agree with the Upanishads, but Sanchez says that since no one can embrace everything, nothing is known. That disagrees with the Upanishads, and they specifically talk about Atman and Brahman embracing everything at the ether, the element of the ether, I've gone over this before, the outermost horizon of the cosmos. So if we go back to the Upanishads, I'll just give some examples. And it's not only related to the ether, there's, there's other places. But I'll focus on the idea of the ether because it embraces everything. And that is where Atman and Brahman reside and Vishnu. They're all synonymous the original self behind all other selves. So I will read here on page 208 from the Chandogya Upanishad. The intelligent, whose body is spirit, whose form is light, whose thoughts are true, whose nature is like ether, omnipresent and invisible, from whom all works, all desires, all sweet odors and tastes proceed. He who embraces all this, who never speaks and is never surprised, he is myself within the heart, smaller than the small, and greater than the great, the outermost horizon of the cosmos. On In the Mundaku Upanishad on page 209, it reads, Om is the bow, the self is the arrow, Brahman is its aim. It is to be hit by a man who is not thoughtless, and then as the arrow becomes one with the target, he will become one with Brahman. In him, the heaven, the earth, and the sky are woven. The mind also, with all the senses, know him alone as the self, and leave off other worlds. He is the bridge of the immortal. He who understands all and who knows all, he to whom all this glory in the world belongs, the self is placed in the ether, in the heavenly city of Brahman. So we saw the same idea 
in St. Augustine, when he talks about in the city of God, how we can know the absolute ideas of God. And I read parts of the confessions where that city of God is specifically the heaven of heavens, the outermost horizon of the cosmos, where we become one with everything by virtue of becoming one with the omniscient mind of God. If you look on page 211 from the Shvetashvatar Upanishad, um, on the right-hand column, he says, He indeed is the God who pervades all regions. He is the firstborn, and he is in the womb. He has been born, and he will be born. He stands behind all persons, looking everywhere. So, the Supreme Self, Vishnu, who is the origin of Atman and Brahman, which are interwoven with the outermost ether sphere, stands behind all persons looking everywhere. That's an instance of achieving objective knowledge through looking through each individual's subjective perspective simultaneously. If you can see everything from everyone's perspective, then you achieve objective knowledge by taking subjectivity to its infinite degree. And then one last example um, from the, uh, the Taittiriya Upanishad, he who knows the Brahman attains the highest Brahman. On this, the following verse is recorded. He who knows Brahman, which is, which is conscious, which is without end, has hidden in the depths of the heart, in the highest ether, he enjoys all blessings at one with the omniscient Brahman. And then from the Katha Upanishad on page 213, but he who has understanding for his charioteer and who holds the reins of the mind, he reaches the end of his journey, and that is the highest place of Vishnu. So the question was, Francisco Sanchez says that since no one can embrace everything, nothing is known. Does the philosophy of the Upanishads agree or disagree in what way? So it disagrees that no one can embrace everything, because Brahman, this, the, or Vishnu, who is the origin of Atman and Brahman, which we've discussed in previous videos, does embrace everything. And if we embrace Vishnu, then we also can embrace everything and therefore know everything. But Sanchez's claim that in order for anything to be known, everything must be known, that does agree with the Upanishad's philosophy. Okay, so that...